Hi, everyone. It's Marsha Martin, the Heart Healer, and we are starting this new year off right with a look at the difference between resolutions and intentions. I was really quite surprised because last week I had suggested that we all talk about our resolutions, but this week I'm going to suggest we all talk about our intentions. So, Let's take, take a look at what our guides have had to share with us about setting an intention as opposed to using the old approach of a New Year's resolution. There's, they say, exchange your New Year's resolution for a new you intention. And they begin. Dearest ones, We want you to enter this new year in a state of flow. In many past transmissions, we have discussed the importance of flowing instead of forcing. Yet the very practice of setting a resolution defies that principle. This year, we'd like you to take a new approach to the way you view those things you'd like to change. However, before we examine how to apply this new way, Let's look at the difference between a resolution and an intention. Words in and of themselves have only the power that was given them throughout the ages or the value you assign them personally. Yet when you examine the word resolve as in resolution, you can hear and feel the energy of force. There's almost an anger attached to the word itself. You are commanding that you stop participating in an activity that you've deemed unhealthy or unworthy and begin participating in an activity or behavior that you've decided will bring benefit. By making this claim, you're in essence saying, I am bad, or what I am doing is bad. Therefore, it must be changed before I can perceive myself as good. As soon as you identify yourself or your behavior is bad, you immediately set up resistance. No one wants to think of themselves as bad. So you will begin justifying the behavior instead of lovingly releasing it. When you establish a resolution or an I must now do this command, you are cementing in the resistance to change. want us just to take a moment and think about how profound this really is. If you have ever set a New Year's resolution for yourself, and I'm sure almost everyone on this call has, you can feel the weight of saying that resolution, how heavy it feels to be carrying around this burden of, I must now do this. And yet, we all do it, and by the end of January, we generally have abandoned those resolutions, and I think it's just because they're too heavy to carry around. They don't feel good. They feel like punishment, and we're always looking for ways to get rid of them. We advise that you begin this new year with an intention. A new way of being that simply allows you to flow into your new behavior. When you say, I intend to begin acting in this way, thinking these new thoughts or being this newly receptive person, you are allowing yourself the opportunity to flow into becoming all that you wanted to be. Intending does not carry with it anger or humiliation that will cause resistance or encourage you to do the opposite to escape feeling bad. Instead, you are setting yourself up for success by intending that you adopt behavior that is more self-loving and proactive. When you begin the year with an intention to experience more love, joy, and peace, you are opening yourself to see the possibilities that surround you. If you take this one step further and make intention setting a daily practice, you are then taking command of your life and your thoughts, yet you are not forcing because you are allowing events to unfold in the way that is for your highest good. 
And this is the big difference. We, when we allow a partnership with the divine to be part of every moment of every day, then we are not saying, I know best. We are saying, this is what I set for myself from what I know right now. However, I understand that I don't have that overarching vision that God does. So I'm going to do my best to move forward in this direction that feels good to me, but I am going to be open to allowing any course correction. I just want whatever comes to be for my highest good. Now there's no rigidity to your statement. Yes, you're being proactive and you're taking responsibility and saying this what is what feels good to me. But you're also saying, I recognize God's tremendous wisdom, so I'm going to let the end product be whatever is for my highest good as God sees that it would benefit me. A daily intention setting practice is done in increments and should respond to the situation as it arises. You would have your overall intention or goal. This would be a broad sweeping statement about the general state of well-being that you want to acquire. I want to feel good. Then you would set smaller sub-intentions for yourself. You may begin upon waking. I intend to feel good and be productive today. And continue to create more detailed intentions as you move throughout your day. Before a meeting, you would set the intention. I intend that this meeting will go smoothly with a positive outcome for all involved. Before travel, I intend that my trip will be smooth, stress-free, and enjoyable. By stating your desire, you move yourself into the energetic state where your desired outcome is possible, and you state your willingness to receive your desired outcome. Very important that we not just say, this is what I want, but that we then move ourselves into a receptive state where we are open and willing to receive the desires of our hearts. We, this means that we are stating we are valuable and worthy. And yes, you are. You absolutely are. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have done. You are always valuable and worthy because you are a part of God. This is not something that can be earned through good works. God is within us. A part of God, that, that the divine center that is us, is a direct connection to God. It is God. So, if God were to look at you, the overarching God were to look at you and say, well, you're not worthy, they would be saying that they themselves are not worthy. So you know and now you understand that it is not coming from God. If you're saying, I don't feel worthy, that's coming from you and you need to do some work on that. Because when God looks at you, they see that divine essence that is you and they consider you worthy all of the time even when you're making a mistake let us now compare the intention process with the resolution process so you can become familiar with the energetic difference between the two to illustrate this let's use the desire to change a habit Many of you commit to losing weight or becoming physically fit with a resolution such as, my New Year's resolution is to shed 20 pounds and get in better shape. Now, on the surface, that sounds great. But let's look what's happening underneath. By making this statement, you have admitted that two negative conditions exist about yourself. The first is you are overweight, and being overweight is bad or shameful. The second is you're in poor physical shape. Therefore, your body is less than pleasing. You are not beautiful, handsome, or meeting some other artificial standard you have set for yourself. 
whatever the mental dialogue you're having with yourself, one thing is abundantly clear. At this moment, you are not good enough, worthy enough, or something enough, and you will never be enough until you change this defect. Wow. You're basically saying to yourself, I'm not good enough or worthy enough to receive, and I will not be until I change this thing that's bad about me. Who can move forward with that kind of baggage being dragged along behind you? This means you're starting from the bottom of a pit and trying to force yourself to love yourself enough to engage in proactive behavior. Chances are you will fail simply because you've told yourself, I am not enough as I am, so therefore it will be impossible for me to make this positive change happen. Now, let's look at what happens when you set the intention to change a behavior. You would say, instead of, I have to do this, I now intend to make healthy eating choices. I intend to add more opportunities for exercise into my daily routine. When you set an intention, you are not criticizing. You are simply looking at what you would like to accomplish and finding creative ways that you can achieve your desired objective. You recognize where you are and have stated where you want to be as you place yourself in a receptive state so that it's possible to get the desired, get, get to the place you desire. Big difference here. In the resolution stage, you were looking at Everything that is negative about you. I have to do this in order to be blah, blah, blah. In the intention phase, you look at what you want to accomplish, but from a positive viewpoint. How can I achieve this in the most loving way? When working with an intention, you would approach meals with a positive state of beingness. I always make healthy eating choices. Now, that feels to me so much lighter than I can only eat a small amount because I am 20 pounds overweight. Well, I'm looking at that small portion on my plate and suddenly I want three serving, three, uh, I want to go back and serve myself three more times. I don't want to just eat that small amount on my plate. But if I have a small portion on my plate and I say to myself, I'm always making healthy eating choices, I will probably be satisfied with the amount of food that I gave myself. If I am not, I will then go back and choose the least um, damaging part of the meal. It may be a salad or something that will give you more bulk for less calories. But you'll make your choice lovingly instead of because you're feeling beaten down. Free of guilt and negative thoughts, you would be more likely to choose foods that support your goal. Using the intention setting process regarding physical fitness, you would actively look for opportunities to walk instead of drive. Take the stairs instead of the elevator or just add more activity into each day. Your goal would be achieved without denying yourself or punishing yourself. Instead, you would love yourself into action. And this is one that I have very successfully incorporated into my day and it is so easy to park a little further away from wherever the door of the place that your establishment you want to go into it is so easy to take the stairs it's so easy to walk when I whenever whenever I can it's now become such a pleasant choice to me that I am actively looking for ways that I don't have to drive. And that 
is because I didn't tell myself, oh, I'm so out of shape. Shame on you. I said, I feel like walking today. It would feel great to walk. Or let me take the stairs. I really feel like using these muscles. To summarize, you may force yourself with hard resolutions that will lead most of you to fail, or you may partner with the divine by entering into a state of allowing through the process of intending. When you open to the possibility, instead of forcing yourself to change, you automatically open your energetic field to divine assistance. In addition, you move yourself into the energetic space where that which you desire awaits. Allow yourself to be a vibra vibrational match to your desires by lovingly creating positive intentions throughout your day. So this is not something that you do once and then you forget about it. This is something that we want to do over and over and over again because we love ourselves so much that we are willing to take those few moments to say, what would feel good to me right now? And then go even further and say, and I am ready to step into that place of receptivity where I can receive this good that is wanting to reach me. So just to recall, just to recap a little bit before we start going into your own experiences with the difference between resolution and intentions, let's just sum up everything they've told us so far. And as I mentioned to you at the beginning, up until this year, I've always been a reluctant resolution setter. And now I was reluctant not because I wanted to avoid setting a resolution. I had things that I wanted to accomplish and I was just as excited as everybody else as I wanted this year to be different. But I could feel the rigidity in what I was saying. And I knew somewhere deep inside me that it meant I would probably give up. And that made me very reluctant to kind of set foot on that path. I was always looking for another way to do it. But until now, I didn't get it. So I'm very grateful that they changed our blog topic for this week and showed us a loving way to achieve that which we desire. The other thing that I found so fascinating is words in and of themselves are not the problem. They're just words. It's the meaning or the value that we ourselves or society has assigned to the word that creates that negative or positive association. And we begin, we don't even realize it, but we are picking up the energy of that word that most, whatever is most prevalent. And then we become steeped in this belief system that surrounds certain words. And what happens is we begin to react automatically without much forethought to the command or the meaning that's become associated with the word. So when you hear the word resolution or resolve, I thought to myself, okay, what does that mean to me? Make a resolution or resolve to do something. And I wrote down a firm statement about future behavior. This was a, I wasn't going to change my mind. This is the way it had to be. This was just it. And then I thought, hmm, let me see what the dictionary meaning of resolution is. Now I'm very curious. So I pulled up dictionary.com and it says to make a firm resolution to do something. Now, my definition was a firm statement about future behavior. Dictionary.com to make a firm resolution to do something. They are almost identical. So without even paying 
any attention to it. I just wrote down the first thing that came into my mind when I was thinking about what does a resolution mean to me? And it was almost identical to the dictionary, which shows us that whatever society believes to be true about a word, unless we've challenged that belief, we've absorbed it. We've heard it throughout our lifetime, and we just absorb whatever it is that we have heard unless we do something to change it. If we identify ourselves or our behavior as bad, we automatically set up resistance. Think for a moment to yourself and just say, okay, it has there been any time in my life when I said, oh, I'm really disappointed in myself. Oh, that was a really bad thing that I did. That you felt good. That you felt like you wanted to go out and, and do something great for someone else. So usually it shuts you down. It it makes you feel small. You want to hide until you can fix whatever it is that you perceive to be your shortcoming. Successful behavior is honored by flowing with an intention. If you have a goal that you want to reach, to reach you are only going to be able to reach it with an intention instead of a resolution. Remember, my definition of resolution was a firm statement about future behavior. Dictionary.com, to make a firm resolution to do something. Neither way am I going to change a behavior especially if I feel that I am condemning myself for doing it, overeating, not exercising, uh, whatever behavior may come to mind. If I'm condemning myself for doing it, I don't leave myself a way forward to successfully move into a new kind of behavior. So you want to remember also to allow yourself to set incremental intentions so that you can adjust to the flow of your day or the situation as it arises. And what do they mean by that? So let's say, using the dieting example again, let's say I've told myself, all righty, I'm ready to lose some of this extra weight by making healthy eating choices. But So I sit down to eat, and I've eaten a pretty, made some pretty good choices, and I'm thinking, oh, good for me. Look at this. I'm really following what this self-honoring practice that I've set forward for myself. And then someone comes out with pie, and I decide I want pie. Well, if I have set a resolution, and I absolutely telling myself, you can't have any pie, I guarantee you I will not leave that table without eating at least two pieces of pie, whether I wanted them or not. However, if I've set myself an intention to be a healthy eater, I may say to myself, I can have as much pie as it feels good to eat. And I know for myself personally That if I am wanting to cut down on eating sweets or something like that, I would probably be satisfied with a very small piece of pie. I would feel that I got everything that I wanted out of that pie. I wasn't deprived. And I would be so thrilled with myself for making healthy eating choices that it would feel better just to say to myself, well, I think I've had enough. I can always go back and have another piece of pie at another time if I really want it. So this is the way we work with ourselves. Do I really want this? I can have anything I want. Do I really want this particular thing? Or can I choose something that may be even better 
and more self-loving to myself and stay more in keeping with the intention that I've set for myself. But remember, with an intention, even if you did decide that you were going to have 10 pieces of pie at that meal, you don't go into blame or shame. That's where you're going to get into the the red zone or the dead zone and cause yourself a big problem. So you don't get into the shame or the blame of it. You simply say, okay, I get it. I must have really wanted that pie. So now I'm setting myself a new intention to choose even more healthy eating at the next meal. Or I'm going to eat a smaller amount if I feel satisfied with that. Or I'm going to go take a walk because now I have extra energy and it would feel good to take the walk and honor my body. So we want to remember that the power of setting an, an intention and use it to the best advantage. You can set an intention before you go to sleep. And I love to do both of these things, by the way, because they're just so powerful in and of themselves. So if you set an intention before you go to sleep, you're actually setting yourself up to communicate with the subconscious mind. So you may say to yourself, okay, I'm going to go to sleep and I'm going to wake up feeling rested and restored and renewed and I will have the answer to this particular issue that I've been working on. Now you are speaking to the subconscious and telling it, go out and get me the answer to this particular issue while I'm sleeping and I am offering up no defense toward it. Then when you wake up, you can also state an intention. This time, the intention would be, I intend to have a fabulous day and to move forward in whatever direction is for my highest good or to move forward on this project that I'm working on or to really feel good the entire day. Whatever it is, you're telling now your conscious mind how you would like your day to unfold. So before you go to sleep, you're dealing with the subconscious mind. And when you wake up, you're dealing with the conscious mind. That's why it's so powerful to do both of these and to really make your mind work for you. Again, we've got to be so careful to avoid making negative statements when you want to encourage change. That is the most important thing in the world. Be loving to yourself. So instead of saying, I want to lose weight or um, I hate my job, <laughs> you would say, I'm going to be making healthy eating choices or I always make healthy eating choices. That would actually be stronger, a stronger statement because when you put it in the now, it is much, it, you can actually act on it. So I, um, I will, I am making healthy eating choices or I have found the job of my dreams. I am so delighted that I have this new job. I am so excited. I remember working in an office and I was working with someone who was very unhappy. And the conversation out of this particular person's mouth was constantly how much they hated the, the job, this job that, that we were doing together. I agree. It was not a great job, but they were constantly complaining and there was absolutely no room in their energetic field to attract something better. And they finally ended up being fired, which is not the way that they had hoped to quit. 
because then they were really under pressure to find another job. So be proactive in the way that you're framing your statement. It's okay not to like your job, but focus on, I have found the perfect job and find something within the job that you are doing that you do like and that you can feel good about. Obviously, you want to spend as much time in, that when you're not working looking for that new job as possible because you're not happy and we don't want you to stay in a state of unhappiness. But it will go more quickly and you will have much more positive results if you keep yourself focused on any good thing where you are and how excited you are that something really great is here for you now. So please avoid making any kind of negative state statements when you want to encourage change. Here's the the way that it goes. You make that negative statement. That that equals bad. That makes you feel bad. Bad will translate into shame and then shame is so difficult to get rid of that you end up cementing that behavior in place. Now you've told yourself, I'm not powerful enough to change it. I'm not enough, uh, good enough, worthy enough, something enough. And so I'm stuck with this behavior. Beware of the not enough. You are always more than enough. But the minute you start having the conversation with yourself of I'm not enough, that's the minute you begin putting those limitations in place and they're like concrete. They are really difficult to get rid of once you've got them in place. So please do your best not to get those concrete barriers drilled down in place in the, in the first place. Remember to partner with the divine and allow yourself to flow through your day. Allow God to help you create your final outcome. It will take so much of the stress and the worry away from you. You do your best. You do what you can to get yourself moving forward. But if you ever get to a place where you're feeling stuck, then give yourself the honor of moving, uh, of just letting go and letting God take over and direct your steps. Okay, that's all that I have to share. And it was quite a bit. I am just so excited that we are now going to be setting intentions instead of trying to follow resolutions that are just so hard-edged and so ripe for failure. I can't honestly tell you that I've ever made a resolution that I was able to keep all the way through the year. At some point, I fell away from it. And that, I never thought about that before. So that's a very interesting a uh, thing to think back on that I've never successfully held on to a resolution throughout the year. At some point, it dropped away, and it usually dropped away before I had had an opportunity to put new behavior in its place, which means the old behavior simply came right back. So I didn't accomplish anything by setting a resolution. I just made it more difficult for myself to move forward. So this year, I am intending to make positive changes. There are many things that I want to accomplish in this year, and I am doing them with intentions and with by partnering with the divine. Instead of trying to get out my baseball bat and beat myself over the head about why I'm not moving more quickly. So who wants to share what intentions you are going to be setting and who would like 
support in seeing you re- get to that, be able to uh, move forward with that intention? Or does anyone need support in terms of creating an intention? In the beginning, when you're first getting used to creating intentions, you may not even realize that you have slipped in some negative wording or verbiage. So if there's something that you want to accomplish, just star two, raise your hand, and tell us what it is that you want to accomplish, and let us give you a framework or an intention that you can move forward with that will be loving and supportive. And just while we're waiting to see who wants to be the first to volunteer what their intention may be so that it can be lovingly supported, let's go through a few of the intentions that are normal. And I did one earlier, which is losing weight. Instead of talking about the weight, I intend to make healthy eating choices. The other thing is to get in better shape. But instead of, I will go to the gym every day and spend an hour lifting weights, I'm going to look for more opportunities to be physically active. Tina, I see your hand is raised. Do you have an intention that you want us to help you with? Yeah, um... I just want to say Happy New Year to everybody, and um, I love what you say, Marcy, because it doesn't make me feel like I'm obligated, but it helps me, I think, because I never in my life um, did New Year's resolution, resolution because I just knew I couldn't follow through, <laughs> um, but I think with mine is more what I really want to do this year is probably more um, um, being more positive of how I uh, um uh, speak like you were saying um you know i think i just don't want to because i always have i have a hard time um i think i always cut myself down and I'm, i have to try to really um uh, give myself uh a, a more um i say um be more positive of myself and know that you know um and not give that ne- and not be so negative towards myself because i don't do it to anybody else i do it to myself so i think that's what i would love to try to do this year Oh, that's brilliant. You know, oh, that's so brilliant. As lightworkers, it is very common to be wonderfully supportive of other people and horribly critical of yourself. And, you know, the the person could next to you could be making the biggest mistake in the world and you would be saying, Oh, I think you're amazing. You're doing so well. Oh, just keep going. Wow, you know, <laughs> you've got this. And then you might make one little stumble and you want to turn around and say to yourself, oh, my gosh, what's wrong with you? You know better. Yeah. Than that. So <laughs> let, <laughs> let's create an intention. Oh, this is perfect. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Oh, no, we're... Let's create oh, an intention that supports having a loving conversation with ourselves. So this year, we intend to speak to ourselves lovingly, supportively, and with encouragement or with enthusiasm, something along those lines, just like we would speak to another person. And that could be part of our intention, too. Perhaps part of our intention is this year I'm going to speak to myself as lovingly as I speak to others. Yeah, I like that. And that that would, I think, will help us because I guarantee you that none of you on this call are having a difficult time encouraging other people being supportive of their goals or lifting them up when they feel down. But I would absolutely guarantee you that you do not extend that same courtesy to yourself. So yeah. 
this year, our intention is to be as loving and kind to ourselves with our self-talk and with the thoughts about ourselves as we are to those other people that have come to us for help. Let's start thinking of ourselves as our own uh, counseling um, person. So let's pretend that we have come to ourselves and said, hey, I really need help. I'm feeling a little down or wanting to achieve a whole bunch this year. And I could really use your support. Well, if anyone were to come to you, you would automatically say, oh, my gosh, you have all the support you could ever desire. I yeah. absolutely will stand by you. I'll keep it in prayer for you. I will lift you up. I'll encourage you. I can see that you've got this. So let's just pretend that we are our own counseling person and start talking to ourselves in that same way. Oh yeah. my gosh, you're amazing, Tina. Oh, look at you. You can do it. You can do anything. I believe in you. I'm absolutely standing by you. You're not <laughs> alone. You've got me. <laughs> that's, that's the new conversation that I want us to begin having with ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not, we can't always find somebody that's going to support us. Luckily, we have this community and we're very good yeah. about that. But, you know, we still need to give ourselves pep talks throughout the day when yeah. it can be a little bit challenging instead of saying to ourselves, oh my gosh, you know better. What are you thinking? Yeah. I, I, I think. <laughs> I think what it is is that, you know, I kind of get down on myself, and I don't know other people that do this, but I know with myself is that I um, I feel like how could I, how could I encourage anybody else and I lift everybody else up and I can't even do it for myself. I, I don't think I'm worth helping others if I can't even do my own healing and own, well, not healing, but own um, self-talk and, and lift myself up. So, you know, how can anybody want to take my opinion from if I can lift them up and give them the most beautiful uplifting in the world, and I can't even do it for myself, and then I'm feeling more even worse because I feel like, gosh, I, I can't even get myself out of this old, this whole, how could I try to help other people? I, will, I feel so bad. I would not ever want to hurt someone like that. You know, I would want to make sure I'm, I'm healthy enough to help someone. I think that's where I'm critical on. And that's a brilliant observation, but let's look at what's happening there. Mm -hmm. With, if you're critical of you, you take yourself out of the running, and you're now not available to help lift someone else up. So it's really a brilliant um, disinformation campaign. Anybody oh. that has started spreading this well, if you're not perfect, you can't help someone else. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're not healed enough, how could you right. give if you're, input? Yeah. How, how dare you put yourself up in front of people and tell them, hey, this is how you should do it if you're not doing that 24 hours a day. It's really a brilliant way to keep people with good hearts, light workers that are committed to helping others from reaching their full potential and from reaching out to helping another. Yeah. So I think what it is is that, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, as long as you're feeling even a little bit badly about yourself or a little bit of shame because, oh, I'm not, didn't get that perfectly, there may be one person that isn't being touched by your goodness because you've just decided to draw back a little bit. That's the real yeah. shame. The real shame is not, hey, I have moments where I need to be encouraged. But the real shame is I have moments where I don't feel good enough about myself to help myself or to help others. 
Yeah. I, th- I think what it is is just, um, you know, you feel like, you know, I know a lot of people are, are having such a hard time in, you know, all the time, but especially the holidays and, you know, and if you are having a bad day, I really would hate to put my my hurt in that with, you know, knowing that they're having that pain. i rather focus on their pain first before I focus on mine and say, okay, but, you know, I think a lot of empaths suffer secretly. They do. They, I think a lot of empaths really sit by themselves because they know that they love so much and they care so much that, you know, they, they, it's hard for an empath to reach out sometimes. I think you're absolutely correct. And let's just look at this from a dark light perspective. If you are honoring the dark, the last thing you want is for that empath to reach out and to get help so that they become stronger and their beautiful light is more readily available in society. So yeah. you're going to spread these lies of, oh, you can't help someone unless you're completely healed yourself or uh, you should be ashamed if you can't keep it together 24 hours a day. Both of those are lies, but yeah. to the empath or to the deeply sensitive person that just wants to help another person, it makes them feel like, well, I have no value. I have nothing to offer mm-hmm. now. And so they close down mm-hmm. and then the dark begins to win that particular battle because you're not available to help that other, help the person that was reaching out. Yeah. And, oh, you're so and, beautiful, Marcy. <laughs> beautiful well, heart. I mean, you're so kind, kind-hearted and wise words. And, you know, it's so uplifting to have this group because I think it just helps a lot of other people come out of what they feel. Good. And that's what this is all about is you're safe and you are wonderful. And, you know, perhaps you're not perfect, I don't know any perfect people, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> That's so beautiful that you say that. That's I love that because we're not. We're not. We all we all have our own little issues and makes things, but we're but we can all still be loving. I feel like we all, but we can love each other for those mistakes. And there's no judging. We can love each other, and and without the judging, we can even love more. Absolutely, and. When we allow ourselves to be perfectly imperfect, we recognize we're all on a journey. We're, we're getting there as quickly as we can get there, and we're getting stronger every day. But we really can't wait to share our love because then we may be leaving someone else behind. So thank you, Tina. This was brilliant. And now, David, has got his hand raised, so I'm excited to hear. David, what are, what are you wanting to share with us? Hi, everybody. Um, can you hear me okay? Perfectly. Okay. okay. Happy New Year. <laughs> uh, Happy New Year to you. <laughs> um, I, love, I love what Tina talked about, because that is so true. Um, and being an empath my, myself, I can only agree. Um, it's uh, like with New Year's resolutions, it's like intentions we um, we place on ourselves. It's like, it, why should we do this for a whole year? I mean, we can change our mind every day. Uh, exactly. You know, <laughs> um, if if something doesn't work, well, so try something else. But um, what what I feel is um, even I caught myself today also like. Am I a healer? <laughs> no. Am I good enough? <laughs> oh. <laughs> same, same thing. And, exactly. Um, and, um, you know, it, it's weird. We, we don't know where this, where it comes from. Is it something we pick up, up from the collective? Or is this past life things or whatever? And it can come from anywhere, but we need to be alert that, we it's good to put ourselves first um and don't take on everybody's crap 
right away. I mean, we can discern if, if, if it's ours or if it's somebody else's. And that is not easy sometimes. No, it's not. And especially, you know, we're in this full moon, um, this cancer moon that's bringing up emotions. And so everyone who is empathic, uh, healer by nature, or is going to be asking themselves the question, oh, am I good enough? Or what if I hurt someone? Because the emotion is all rising to the surface. And so you've got the the darker side of the emotion, which is um, this is all baloney. No, nobody can help you. Uh, you're on your own, that kind of, or you don't deserve this. And then you've got the other side of it, which is, oh, I so desperately want to be of help. And we have to, as you said, be really, really careful when that starts coming up. Am I good enough? Well, by whose definition? <laughs> who, said, who is setting the, these uh, standards? Good enough, bad enough, uh, you know, in between kind of thing. If you have a willing heart and you are wanting to uplift someone else, that's all you need. You may not have the highest skill level when you first begin. Perhaps it takes you longer. Perhaps you're not as strong. Perhaps you um, don't know the Tech, the most powerful technique. But just the fact that you're willing means that you're, you are available to be used as a conduit for God to bring through this energy. And so you're always more than good enough. Even if you're not the strongest, you know, perhaps you don't start out doing miracles like Jesus did. I don't know of anybody who really has that ability, but I would venture to gain to to say that your good heart and your willingness will do as much for um helping that person heal as even if you do not have the, the miracle wielding strength of Jesus. So, yeah, that's a really good thing to bring up, especially here in the beginning of the year with this new moon as emotions rise to the surface. We've got to squash that conversation. Am I good enough? All we really need to be asking ourselves is, am I willing? If I am willing, then I've got to trust that God will work through me in the way that is best for the person that I am wanting to help. And as I get stronger and develop a deeper connection to God, I may be able to help more people. But I absolutely will help whomever I I come in contact with if that is my intention and now Tina you've got something to add to this too Tina oh, can you oh, yeah <laughs> and I add to uh, add to like what <laughs> did you want to add to what David was saying Oh, no, what, you know what's so neat when David was talking this, I never, I mean, you know, I've seen it with you, Marcy, but this blue light just flashed, like what he was saying was so on, on it, you know, it was just real, it rang truth to everything. So that is so beautiful what he was saying and you and, and, but I was just amazed that I've never really, you know, only see things when you're around, but this time, like this light just flashed. I was like, oh, Wow. He it really really touched me and I really made me feel like wow he really understands a lot really yes. got to me David that was so brilliant because if the dark can 
stop you from ever putting foot in the arena, ever beginning to explore the different dimensions of healing or your own strength, that is a great victory for them. So, mm-hmm. uh, I, I agree. I agree. Really I mean, brilliant if- that you brought that up for all of us to take a look at. So let's let's set an intention around that, and let's just our intention will be that we're going to be willing recipients of whatever energy God is sending out and wonderful conduits that it will go wherever it needs to go. And we're just going to trust that wherever we are, we are strong enough for whomever it is that we're trying to help. And let's assume that because God is so perfect, that God knows enough only to send us people that can be positively affected by where we are now. So if we're just beginning understanding how to use the healing energy, it may not be a good idea for us to go practice on someone who's terminally ill because that would make us feel like we're not good enough or we are not effective. But let's just say somebody comes and says, you know, I really am going through a a tough time and I could use some support. And you send out your healing energy and you can feel that you've made a difference in their life. That's going to, that positive experience is going to strengthen you. And also they're reminding me whenever you encounter someone that is terminally ill and perhaps a whole bunch of people get together and lift them up in prayer and do Reiki Reiki or whatever healing methodology they choose to do and the person still chooses to return to their energetic state. When somebody is quote-unquote terminally ill They may have already made the choice that they're ready to return and it, and they don't want to be dissuaded or encouraged to stay here. So you could make their passage, um, easier. Let's make sure there isn't any pain or discomfort. But if they've already made up their mind, it's very unlikely that you're going to turn it around and get them to agree to stay longer or to accept the miracle of good health. Because remember, we can only send out the energy of healing and it's up to the other person who's receiving the energy to decide what they're going to do with it. So, um, Let's just assume that God is going to send us the people that we will be most effective with. Mm -hmm. Marcia? We can get stronger. Yes, dear. Can I add that we should uh, respect everybody's path? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's not not easy sometimes because we like to help each other. uh, But sometimes somebody needs to be ready to be helped first. (laughs) You know, again, another brilliant point. It is so easy as empaths, you feel all this pain and your first instinct is, oh, let me suck it all up so that these people won't feel it anymore. But that's not the role of the empath. First of all, they created the pain to make them aware that something wasn't working right in their life. It is their warning system, their early warning system to to make a change, to do something differently. And if we run around and take all of the pain away from everyone, they're just going to create, keep going the same direction, and then they'll run into that pain at a different time or place, but this time you won't be there. And it may smack them silly. And then they may look at you and say, what the heck? 
why didn't you warn me about this? Or, you know, why didn't you <laughs> help me? Which, from their viewpoint, may seem perfectly um, a perfectly normal thing to say. You may be in the corner saying to yourself, uh, but, uh, 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 hey, I, I took the pain away from you for as long as I could or as often as I could. But we have to remember God is saying, let them experience the pain and send them love and encouragement so they can deal with it, so they can become stronger and or make a better choice. But we don't always want to rush in and take their pain away because they're just going to, going to encounter it at a later time. Tina, do you have something else you want to share with us? Oh, I just wanted to say that um, you made a beautiful point, and uh, you just uh, gave me closure on everything you said, and I love that. I'm, I'm glad you said about, you know, when they choose to pass, that, you know, it, if, uh, if we went over there to stop it, I know that we can't. They're, they made that choice. That is so amazing that you said that because all we could do is, like you were saying, the comfort. Give them the comfort, you know, because um, that was their choice and they decided what they wanted to do. To, so to interfere in what um, – um, I, forgot, I forgot his name, but what he David. was saying is so true. David, sorry, I'm so apologizing. Uh, David said was um, – that is so true. We're interfering. And, you know, it just gave me validation about what everybody, what we do in our lives and, um, and where I stand in the background and just understand that y'all yeah, could do is just send love. I can't interfere. And I, and it just does, it makes it better not to absorb so much and feel more, um, uh, in crying a lot. And I think that's where I was at on, you know, wow, you just like, you just like closed that whole deal on how I was feeling about everything today, you know, because it was just, you know, like you say, to go visit a person that's dying. That is just a painful thing because you know you can't change their mind. They chose to do what they did. They want to do. You just got to be supportive. And I think that's a beautiful thing that you said. Just be supportive. And always remember, each one of us has free will and no matter how badly you want something for them, if they don't want it, it will not happen. Yeah. So remember, we're going to be using our in intentions and not our resolutions this year because we're going to be loving and kind and flowing to ourselves. We're partnering with the divine and we understand and fully accept that we just as we are are more than enough i was sending a huge hug that is more than enough for everyone on this call i so thank you for all of the participation this is wonderful we are starting our new year off with gusto i'm so excited to to be with you every week and just remember we're going to now do our call on Wednesdays from here on out and now next week will be the topic that I told you about last week which got changed when I sat down to write it and I'm awfully glad they did change it so now we're to next week we will do the law of restoration and we'll talk about that on Wednesday but in the meantime please know you are more than enough. You are magical, special, wonderful beings. I am so glad you're here on this planet with me. You're the reason that we're going to make this world into a loving place. So sending you all my love, and I will see you next week. <laughs>